Matthias. I'm glad to be here talking about threat modeling. As you can see from the title, it's a pretty practical topic. Uh, often threat modeling presentations are very abstract. Um, this is very much based on a specific tool uh, that is a Microsoft threat modeling tool that I happen to, um, you perhaps think, um, I think why Microsoft threat modeling tool and in that specific version. Um, I came to that last year, it was in October or something, when some customer selected this uh, um, and said to me, okay, I have to uh, implement this in, into his organization. And, um, but I think he kind of selected this tool just by, by Googling for threat modeling, came to that. And uh, so I, I was a bit, okay, shocked. And then I, I Googled uh, and, and, and saw that there's a new version that's actually kind of cool because it lets you a lot, uh, customize lots of things and, and uh, is some, uh, really something that um, I guess many are looking for, um, although that's um, um, pretty much uh, Windows-centric. So I'm happy to, hear, uh, happy to be here to, to share this experience that I uh, gained with implementing this tool the last more or less eight, eight months in this larger organization. And uh, yeah, and share this. This knowledge. Um, yeah, before I start, so I have lots of demonstration. So with the Microsoft tool, uh, <laughs> what could uh, get possibly go wrong? Um, but uh, before I start with this uh, demonstration and come to this tool, I, I give you a little bit of context where it is in this um, threat modeling um, universe. There's lots of um, words, concepts around. And after this, I um, get you a little bit conclusion. So um, about me, very short, so I've dedicated basically all my professional life, that is more than 12 years, to building secure software applications, um, especially integrating that into larger organizations. I wrote a book that is in German, so you have to <laughs> read, uh, learn German before you can read it. Uh, I don't know if it's worth it, but uh, you um, can perhaps try. And yes, um, just starting motivation. I think many of you who are here uh, know that it's a good idea to start very early with security and then consistently in every phase. And uh, one reason for that is, of course, uh, if you want to have a secure house, you can't, you need a strong fundament and you can't change the fundament later. You need to address this uh, early. And uh, I'm often, I'm a, a lot in, um, in, in larger organizations and I see that these, uh, this, this third point there, um, oh no, it's uh, the fourth actually, um, that uh, more and more architectural security requirements are demanded from project teams, internal project teams, and they're struggling with that because they don't know how, how they can check if they, um, they meet these requirements. And we have not so many things there in this phase, I can normally call these two phases, specification and design phase, um, conceptual security phase, so we have lots of coding check tools and, and dynamic testing tools after that, but not so much much there um, that can help um, uh, project teams um, identifying what uh, security problems they have to think about. So, um, threat modeling. Uh, I think there are lots of definitions about threat modeling. I, I use this as just my uh, definition. Threat modeling is a structured approach for identifying uh, potential security problems that are threats um, within the software specification or design. So you can use this within the soft specification or design phase. So and threat, a threat model, and uh, perhaps others may disagree, but this is for me is very important, is a, is a model of threats, not just a list of threats. So uh, you can model something, uh, some, some sort of uh, uh, design and then say, okay, there are lots of this and this threat came out, but that's not really a threat model, right? So if you just say, okay, uh, your threat is uh, sniffing the, the, the connection uh, in, in that application, then it's not, it's not a model of threat, it's just one threat or a list of threats. A model is something that uh, when you change, some, change something later in the, in the design, for instance, you can see, okay, um, my threat landscape changes in some way. Um, I see, tell, uh, show you how, how that, uh, looks like um, later when you look at in a tool. So, um, and when we uh, talk about uh, 
uh, different kind of methodologies for threat modeling. There are lots of, uh, lots of around. And when you uh, see threat modeling talks, uh, the one may tell you something but, which sounds a bit completely different to what the other one said. Um, I try to do this to, to, to make it a bit clearer on this slide here. Uh, so some people talk about risk assessments, some are about threat assessments. So, so the truth is, um, so we have a risk assessment process that looks more or less this way. Uh, you have a structure analysis and then threat assessment where you identify threats and you determine risks and so on and so on. So threat modeling or threat assessment as part of this risk management process. And then you can have, uh, and that looks more or less like this, a decomposition, scoping, you identify uh, risks, um, perhaps um, rate them and determine uh, countermeasures for that. So that can be a part of the risk assessment or can be conducted by its own. That is in, in some organizations very important because for instance, when you want to have this executed or conducted by developers, they are not, they're not allowed to do risk assessments in their organizations. They can just identify security problems, potential security problems. So they would uh, more tend to do a threat modeling or threat assessment, not a risk assessment often. So that's often a, a political thing as well. So, and then when we look at this um, um, uh, process, one, aspect there, one uh, step is very important where you have lots of different kind of tools and, and, and techniques, and that is the threat identification. And here are just, just a few examples that you might have heard already. For, one is misuse, abuse cases. One important is threat patterns, questionnaires that you can fill out for identifying threats. And one are data flow analysis. So there are different kind of uh, um, techniques you can do to identify uh, threats, sometimes the same threats, sometimes different threats. For instance, abuse cases, something that you would more or less use for uh, things in the business logic, use cases, and data flow, as we see it uh, now, is, is a bit more system-centric. So, and when we look at tools for these three different uh, threat identification techniques, Normally, when you have this conducted by some kind of external consultant, uh, it's more or less often, or very often, these tools that, that they will use, Microsoft Visio, Microsoft X, uh, Word, Excel for questionnaires, perhaps. Um, uh, so in many organizations that I uh, was in and, and saw threat models from different kind of uh, companies, um, they were mostly Word documents, PDFs, or whatever. Um, the problem with that is, of course, um, it's uh, it perhaps useful for an external consulting company, but it's very difficult if you want to um, integrate this kind of tool, my Word, basically, or Excel sheet into uh, a process. So um, when we look for consistency, so we want to have a real th uh, model, ease of use, so we often have the fact that we ha want to have uh, an, an, a non-security expert be able to conduct threat assessments, and you wanna, we want to map this to our um, um, custom environment, we'll map our threat intelligence to it. Um, yeah. So um, there are a couple, and that's really not, not many, um, uh, tools that are threat modeling tools. I, I'm not so sure if we can actually name the first one for um, Microsoft Elevation, that is basically a, a card game, but uh, more or less the, the um, Iris Risk Threat Modeler and Microsoft Threat Modeling Tool that are really threat modeling tools that I'm aware of. Perhaps there are more, but, but this is actually the list I'm aware of, so that's not so, so many tools out there. And this tool from Microsoft, Microsoft Threat Modeling Tool is the only one I'm aware of um, that is actually um, free, and we see that all these tools uh, um, kind of map to a specific kind of identification technique, mostly. So, and so now you know where we are in this threat modeling tool landscape. Uh, we can look a bit deeper into um, what um, um, data flow based threat modeling is actually. Um, this is a slide from Michael Howard. Um, so the first, um, and it shows um, data flow um, elements that we use in a normal DFD assessment. 
um, external entities, processes, data stores, data flows, so that's nothing um, very security relevant, uh, that's very security relevant that you use in a normal data flow analysis. Um, so, but um, where the very much security uh, um, thing come into play is these trust boundaries that is very important for us for identifying uh, security problems in the software design. And that um, says to us, okay, there's some, some kind of a flow, I show it in a minute to, in, in a tool uh, to you, um, that crosses this kind of trust boundary, so there must be um, some sort of uh, validation applied or some kind of authentication to it. I show it to you in a second, as I said. So, and um, in this um, Microsoft world, they um, uh, came up with this uh, stride approach, which is basically just a classification for threats. Things we can, we can classify them to spoofing, tempering, uh, repudiation, information disclosure, denial of service, elevation of privilege, and you can map all kind of threats that you identify in the software design to that, for instance. Um, yeah, denial of service, pretty much clear, elevation of privilege, privilege escalation, spoofing, um, tempering, something that you, yeah, um, some kind of data flow that you spoof. So, and uh, the interesting thing that is this um, uh, uh, technique that Microsoft um, introduced is to map these kind of stride elements to these um, uh, DFD elements, saying, okay, for instance, just to make it very short, we have a data flow. Data flow can be potentially tempered, right? So if you have a HTTP connection, it can be tempered or it can, uh, can be disrupted or you can um, sniff it. So that's basically this, this kind of what this mapping says us, tells us. And there is a way to map these kind of element back to, for instance, OWASP top 10, um, but it's not very clear. So for instance, cross-site scripting, what is it? It's tempering, spoofing, can be all, everything, right? So, so it's just, uh, don't spend too much time thinking about this, but uh, there's uh, some, they're kind of uh, relevant to each other. So, and um, Microsoft Threat Modeling Tool, um, very short before I, I, I show it to you, um, uh, it's a Windows tool that's problematic. I don't know if, uh, if you can, if you are able to, to start it within a Wine or Docker, Docker container, but uh, basically it's a Windows.net tool, so you uh, have to use it in Windows uh, platform, unfortunately. It's free, though. You can also share the, the templates and the models that I show you um, freely. And it has a very interesting uh, and kind of confusing kind of history. So I think it started 12 years ago, and uh, then was, it was first a Windows uh, um, um, tool, Windows Fat Client. Then it was kind of a Visio plugin, so you have to have Visio for, for this. And then later it was uh, then back a Windows uh, tool, so very, 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 a bit confusing now when we look at the, the tool, uh, it says uh, it's, it's, it's Microsoft Threat Modeling 27, so I don't know what, what happened with five and six, but um, yeah, uh, there's a download link, so you can um, download this there for, for free. Yeah, demo time. Let's see if I can start it. Mm. So that's basically how it looks like um, when, you, when you start it. Um, you can then, I show the uh, bottom part to you in a minute, um, select a, a template that you want to use, and then you say, okay, create a, create a model. So often you would, of course, open an existing model and change something. You wouldn't start on uh, here by scratch. And then you have um, a couple of um, stencils here on the left, and, and when I close this, you will see that it's basically these DFD elements that we saw before. So we have a, a process, uh, external interactor, a data store, flows, uh, and then we have trust boundaries and borders that is basically the same, it's just a different kind of stencil. So, um, and down there we have, for instance, as a, as a general process, we have a um, web application. Let's see, if I find it there, we can say web application. And then we have, for instance, uh, general interact, uh, generic in external interactor, so something externally. So there's a square here, a browser, um, a data store, um, for instance, a secret database. Then we can say, let's do uh, HTTP. Um, so that's a very simple application we see here. 
course, uh, HTTP goes back. Um, then we need, of course, some sort of uh, SQL. There is no SQL um, data flow in the standard template, so we use just binary. And, oops, no, that was not good. So, so and that's very simple application, of course. And, and after this, we can click on threads and see, um, make it a bit bigger. A um, couple of threads that are already identified by this uh, diagram um, based on yeah, based on the, the, the data flows and the, the, the stencils that we use there. So when, you're, when we go down, we see what kind of um, uh, uh, part of this diagram is affected by, what kind of flow is affected by, by uh, this kind of threads. So for instance, make it a bit bigger. We have these dried categories there, tempering, spoofing, and so on. And we have here cross-site scripting. Uh, um, we have here spoofing something, spoof. Uh, we have what is more interesting, perhaps, for understanding. Uh, elevation using personation we should have something like spoof, yeah, spoofing again. Um, so lots of generic things. Um, it's just 10, so now let's imagine we have the, the browsers in the internet. You, we would, of course, add a trust boundary saying, okay, the data that comes from that is, is untrusted. So that's basically um, showed um, by, by this uh, boundary here. Okay, we can also put it a bit differently, like here, it's scope. So like a, uh, there was a line that is now a really boundary in this tool. And then we go back and see, okay, we now have a uh, lot more threads, 21 compared to 20. And we have things like, what I was looking for, data flow sniffing. Uh, some, somebody could sniff HTTP, of course, uh, especially because we transport it over the internet or over a, a trust boundary. Um, so, um, and uh, when we do now things like, okay, we uh, say, okay, HTTP is perhaps not a good idea. Let's don't do it HTTP. Let's uh, uh, use HTTPS for that. Um, we can um, see that da, 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 dim, HTTPS. Um, so HTTPS, lots of threads will be hopefully gone. So we have just 18 left, so the sniffing is gone, and so on. So that's basically how that, that works. I uh, sh uh, explained bit what happens in the, in the, in the background uh, in a second. And we have other things uh, here that we see. see. So we have each kind of uh, stencil has some sort of properties. So for instance, we can define something as out of scope so that no threats will be identified for this. For instance, we have a, a component that is not part of the system, uh, not, so that is used but really not uh, part of the system, so an external component instance. Um, or we, uh, we have lots of specific uh, um, um, properties here. It's a bit confusing when you do this first time. So shared, backup, encrypted. Send. Let's just do this one here. Stores, uh, stores credentials, and we see that we, when we go back, um, we have a, a new uh, thread here. There is this weak uh, credential storage, and um, you see it on the on the right that there is a explanation for that. Um, so obviously by clicking, by selecting this SQL database, SQL database, as a, the database where uh, credentials are stored, uh, this thread was identified. We can uh, look at this and say, okay, um, let's, let's rate it uh, as, uh, yeah, it's already mitigated for some reason. Put a, a justification in that, blah, blah, blah. And then we can um, create a report on, of course we need to rate uh, most of the, uh, we should rate these, all these threads that we have. At the moment, it's, uh, it's quite a lot, so we have 43. Um, and say, okay, that's relevant, that we, uh, for that we have a, a, a mitigation in place that's not applicable uh, or whatever. And then we can uh, uh, share this uh, model to, um, to developers, to someone else, or to create, we can create a custom report uh, just clicking here on things that are not started, for instance, and then we have a have a 
um, site modeling report here as an HTML page. So that's basically how it works um, from um, out of the box. Now let's look at um, how that works in there. So that's basically the same functionality that you had in uh, thread modeling uh, tool 2014. And what comes with this new version, which really makes the tool actually really great because we saw that we have lots of um, abstract threads that are perhaps not so much uh, relevant for our specific system. And it's very lot, we have lots of, um, lots of um, um, properties there. We can um, open these templates Template and model are both um, XML-based documents. Uh, and let's just open it um, there. And we see um, here uh, we have the stencil. So we have, again, this, uh, this structure. We have uh, the processes, general interactor, general data store, data flow. And we can look at this, uh, uh, change everything, show to you in a second what uh, makes this interesting. And uh, then we have these thread types. For instance, we saw data flow sniffing and we see the thread logic behind that. So a source is generic process. For that to, to explain it a bit better, I, I need to show you the slides. So this, uh, this logic works, for a sec. That's basically this. So you always have a, a source um, that can be a specific stencil, for instance, a browser or a, a parent, which is a, in that case a generic external interactor that you can map uh, 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 the logic to. And then we have a data flow. Data flow can has also have a, a couple of uh, properties applied to it. Uh, it may cross a trust boundary with certain kind of attributes and, uh, uh, and um, then it uh, uh, ends up at a target, could be a specific type, replication, or uh, you can go to a, a parent, in that case a generic process, and map all kind of thread logic to it. And that's basically what you see in that tool, and that's pretty cool for two reasons. For the first is you understand how this, this thread logic in that tool works. So you can say, ah, we have a data flow sniffing problem there, let's look at the, the rule, and they say, ah, okay, it's mapped because we have a generic process there and we haven't uh, selected the flow confidentiality to yes. Um, and this is, for instance, automatically be done by certain kind of stencils. And then we, now we see that works. For instance, we, have, uh, we saw that this changes after we switched to HTTPS. And um, let's go to this. Um, generic data store, data flow. So we have data flow and you say, uh, see that we have here kind of properties that we map, confidentiality, uh, integrity, that's something you can select for a data flow. Or you have th things like this here, HTTPS, where this is kind of pre-selected. Uh, HTTPS already provides conf confidentiality, integrity. So, um, so this uh, is uh, by this kind of uh, exclude filter is uh, automatically identified as not um, relevant for a data flow sniffing problem. So, um, so that's, that's great because we can uh, change everything here. We can change all the description. We can also add some kind of uh, look and, and change uh, uh, properties uh, that we can put into the model, for instance, uh, 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 we can define countermeasures and risks. And uh, what makes it really great is we can also um, add new stencils. For instance, we can say, um, see it here, uh, um, my app, right? So that's a new stencil now. And uh, when, we, um, when we create a new model, hopefully that, oh, no, that, so of course, Oh, it was, was there. So normally it's, uh, we need to select, of course, the, the right, that right template for that. We create a model for that and we see, okay, we have my app here. So that's, for instance, a specific uh, a sensor for, for a specific customer, SAP system, for instance, uh, that we want to uh, uh, it, uh, define uh, threats for. Uh, now let's go back. Um, so what's this, I guess? 
um, my app, and now we can say, okay, um, let's define uh, certain kind of properties there, um, um, insecure, whatever, right? Uh, can do whatever you want here. Uh, yes, no. Um, and then we can put thread logic on that and saying, okay, we have a tempering um, problem there that we want to raise, saying new um, custom thread, whatever we call it. And we can say, okay, when something has a source, um, see, source is, see, my app, um, then this kind of thread is raised. When we write this wrongly, we would see that we have a message there that say, okay, the model is inconsistent. So we can do this and, uh, and say source, um, I think it has um, my app from property. So we can add certain kind of, uh, ask for um, um, certain kind of properties that are selected there. So and um, after we do this, let's do it, um, blah, blah, blah. Um, we, hopefully I saved it, um, did I save it? Um, so normally when we do this and, and then create a model by this and we have uh, built up a, a simple thread uh, model uh, with this stencil uh, as a source, we would see, see that thread. Um, I have an example for that uh, made up. I think it was this one here. So here we have an example. I call it my special app. I had this uh, simple thread logic map to it. And then we see um, I have here a couple of uh, threads uh, uh, called it special vulnerability in it. So it's, it's really, really easy to, to implement your, your own thread model. You just have these uh, parent and, and the, the stencil below that uh, that you can use. But it's, it's really, really nice um, for creating your own thread models. And let's look at a, a little bit more um, a complex one. Um, that I used. So what I did is um, I found that um, by using this in this organization, we have this uh, standard template and it has lots of, lots of, lots of, lots of attributes that need to be uh, answered. Um, let's go back to it uh, once more. Sorry for that. Um, was the standard template. So we have here lots of uh, stencils that are, uh, that are not so relevant for especially web applications and lots of uh, questions that need to be answered here, uh, running as, input level. So, uh, so developers were completely confused uh, what kind of uh, um, things they had have to answer there. And so we look at this template and we say, okay, many of these uh, attributes are, are not kind of mapped by any kind of thread logic at all. So, and, uh, and some threads are just um, a bit weird. So the logic was a bit weird. So we, what we did is um, we took this uh, template and you can download it afterwards. So I give you a URL for that. Uh, throughout all kind of unnecessary stencils, uh, thread logic. So it's very simple now. Um, so we have a um, replication here um, and you can just uh, uh, have uh, some kind of properties there but it's not just 20 or something, it's just four or five that you can easily answer. We now have a, a security gateway that we often have uh, in larger organizations. Um, and we have here a, a replication firewall. It's, uh, Basically, it's, uh, here it's out of scope because we don't want to uh, assess threats for the application firewall, but we want to have this in our, our diagram. Um, so uh, uh, this is this, and as you see, we, uh, we also added uh, things, new trust boundaries, so you, you can do whatever you want to, to map this to your environment. Uh, also, networks. Networks was something that wasn't, um, uh, they are at all. Um, for instance, we have now have here internet DMZ and we have a, um, a shared environment uh, and then we have different kind of trust boundaries between them. So we can, uh, and we can do this um, map, so a very complex thread model we can um, define not by just one diagram but by many diagrams and when we look at the, um, the results at the end, so this is all kind of 
combined to them. So you can go through and look at the, the problems we have. So that's really, really great because at this template we, we use at the, the, the customer, we put all kinds of uh, custom applications in it. Uh, we put lots of gateways in it. We put lots of SAP system in it, mapped lots of SAP thread logic to it. So and everyone who uses this um, uh, uh, extensor um, then um, um, updates its the newest uh, template and finds the newest um, um, threads. So that's, that was actually really, really nice. Um, the template is normally, um, so you have the model and the template. The template is what I uh, showed you before, both is XML. It's copied um, into the, um, the, the template is copied into the model, so the model is just an XML file that you can share to, um, to your developers on check-in, so that looks like this one. Right? So lots of things that you can pass when you want it. So, um, so yeah, it took us a bit, uh, a lot of work actually um, to, to uh, get our own template that we can use in this organization without uh, so much problems, uh, so much confusing questions, uh, um, um, and the template that you can download here is basically um, similar to that. It's not kind of customer specific thread logic in it, but it's something that you can perhaps open and, 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 and see how that works and, and, and use for your own organization. So as I said, we have, uh, you can yeah, download everything here. Uh, lots of samples I showed you, you can download here. Um, um, we integrated a lot of uh, S, uh, additional thread logic. For instance, no SQL injection was a topic, XXE, lots of gateways, trust boundaries. We changed a bit the thread logic. For instance, XXS sanitization was a bit weird. Um, DOS logic and, and, and so on. So that's um, said um, pretty, pretty useful. When you um, need a tool that you integrate in your, your organization, you want to have this, um, 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 your custom environment mapped to it. You want to have custom threads, custom systems um, integrated into it. Um, for that, it's a really great tool, but you have to spend a bit of time uh, changing this template. And uh, yeah, and if, of course, it's just, uh, it's just one tool. Uh, it's just this data flow assessment uh, methodology. Uh, uh, it's, it will not uh, be able to, of course, find business logic threads, for instance, so easily. There are other techniques like questionnaires or abuse cases that you might may co combine to it. And of course, it's useful for some sort of uh, a target group for some kind of a user. So uh, uh, it's a system-centric approach, and if you want to have a tool that helps you doing um, system um, uh, centric threat models, then um, I think it's uh, worth um, having a look at this. Okay, I think I was pretty, pretty fast. Um, any questions? Sir? Yes, please. Yeah, I mean, depends on if you rely on the standard template, which has lots of questions in it, or if you throw everything out of it and <laughs> make it a bit easier to use. But, um, and it depends, uh, actually, so we, we had lots of, uh, so the first times we used this, um, was lots of question raised, so what kind of threat is this? <laughs> Spoofing, <laughs> never heard, or, or they think about like disrupting the system, how can this be? And so at the start, it, it, it's, and it's good because you, you of course, realize so what kind of uh, problems are perhaps handled by some sort of standard system. So the first times it takes a bit longer, but after you realize this, you would perhaps put a bit of this, this thinking, this uh, um, threat logic back into the template and it gets, gets faster and faster. Normally, um, so perhaps uh, when you do this um, um, and support it by some kind of it takes it takes an hour normally to 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 go very fast through this threat, mo threat model. It's not not that much actually, but if you do this by your own, of course, you need to um, uh, think about a lot about these threats, uh, these uh, threats, and what um, um, they they.
they mean. For a really large application, of course, it needs much, much more time. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, yeah, that's a bit complicated. Yeah, that's, that would be really great, actually. <laughs> so that's not supported. So what, what you can do is these different kind of diagrams. And then they, so for instance, you would have uh, um, um, some things like th this here, where you have, uh, it's uh, uh, connected to some kind of trading web app. And then you have another connection there or something internal in this trading web app that you model uh, different here, for instance, trading web app, and you have different user connect to it, or you have internal logic, so you model a different kind of layer. But it's, uh, it's, and, and it's mapped by the standard name, so you gave it the, the, uh, um, uh, the same name. But you can't really do this like, uh, okay, let's, let's click into it, and then I get back to a different uh, kind of layer. So it's a bit restricted. <laughs> Uh, I, I, uh, I must admit, yeah. but uh, you can deal with it uh, by using kind of different kind of diagrams, and then you can can switch through this. Yeah. But we have a really really large complexity. It makes perhaps sense to have really different kind of uh, uh, models, not putting everything in one. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Tom. Yeah, the what, sorry? Requirements, yeah, so what you can do, um, uh, so what we added to this standard template was actually uh, a new tag, so I showed it to you in, in the template, uh, called countermeasure, that's not in, <laughs> in the standard template. So you can add a kind of countermeasures that you, you wanna uh, define, blah, 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 and then you can, uh, create a report and then these custom tags that you integrated like um, countermeasure, like whatever, you know, you can name it whatever. It, it's um, part of this uh, risk. So we are added, also added here risk or team, so something like that. And they are all uh, part of this, sorry. Uh, um, I have to go back there. Um, part of this, um, this document. So now I created this by this default document, but it would be here as a new countermeasure. So that's actually working. Um, but of course, if you want to have a um, have a uh, connect this to a kind of a wiki where you have all these uh, countermeasures uh, described, it's, it's a bit difficult. Of course, you can put here a link uh, on it uh, for, for this wiki where these countermeasures describe. So there's no standard mapping for countermeasures. Um, although you can, of course, put this in the threat logic, as you have here description, you can also put different uh, additional fields and say, okay, let's, let's describe our uh, countermeasure for that specific uh, threat. That would, of course, work, right? And, and then you have a countermeasure for Java, for PHP, and, and that could all work. You have a question? Um, the same, actually. So, so we uh, <laughs> found this a bit uh, diffic difficult. So you can um, uh, you can have here uh, in investigation needs applicability mitigation whatever. Um, we found that uh, to be a problem as well. So we added an uh, additional field that is risk. Or you can call it whatever you want, priority or whatever. So you can do this by your own, and in, then you can sort for that and and prioritize. Yeah, we added, but you can add it to, to your uh, the own template. You can download this with this risk added, uh, but uh, risk property added. But you can, of course, uh, uh, open uh, the the model by yourself, put it in yourself. So you can put every kind of properties to it you want: countermeasures, risk priority, whatever you want, team, uh, Jira ticket, right? <laughs> so that's pretty pretty open. Yeah, it is, right? Yeah. 
You mean from an older version? Um, no, I mean, like they have video uh, HD or any kind of... Well, no. No, I, th I don't think that would work. Actually, we, we found it pretty uh, difficult, but we described this, uh, or the, I described it on the, on the web page, to if you have a, a model uh, and you want to apply some kind of sort of completely different um, template to it. So, for instance, the, this template version is, uh, the, the, um, is here, and when you want to apply something to it, a different template, you have to do this in the XML. That's described on the, on the web page. I, I refer to um, in, in, the, in, the, um, uh, in the presentation, so that's possible, but uh, this kind of thing is pretty difficult, yeah. That's definitely one thing um, that's not very helpful other thing is that you just have these two areas that you just have generic process that uh, we're, we're a bit struggling with generic process and then web application but not generic process web application and then another uh, um, you know a level where we have web application type one type two type three so that's also a restriction perhaps they change this but uh, that's something yeah we, we needed to build our thread logic around so yeah and Yeah, you, you mean by uh, that a, 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 a stretch can fall into different kind of stride categories at the same time? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, elevation. I haven't seen it actually, so but this is perhaps more clear. I, I don't look so much on the category, the stride category, to be honest. Uh, I haven't seen it that, uh, that there is a mapping to more than one category. Uh, I think, is it important for you? Um, because I never look at this, to be honest. <laughs> so normally it's just uh, doing, yeah. So I think a stride is a bit more, a bit confusing sometimes because it, uh, especially when we have very, um, some uh, threats like the implementation threats like cross-site scripting, is that, uh, um, we would have needed a lot of stride categories to map, right? So, as I said, yeah. Beautiful. Great. Um, uh, to, if you can import it from the um, earlier version, I don't know. It could be, but I'm pretty sure that this is possible because the tool pretty much hasn't changed at all. It's just the the template that's that's you now a fantastic new. Um, um, function, but uh, the tool itself is the same. The template looks pretty much the same, so it should be possible. Yes. So we, uh, how to share the template? So we um, uh, used, as we shared it with a uh, SharePoint <laughs> that's uh, run into a couple of complications actually, but uh, so at these one large organizations we're working uh, with uh, a lot with these uh, templates. Uh, we share it via SharePoint actually and send it via email. So we don't have really good best practice for that. You would be able to actually put it into a repository because it's XML, so we can do that. Um, yeah, but um, yeah, since it's not binary, um, I think that would be definitely the best idea because it's, then you have a, a revision control on that. Thank you. If you have any more questions, please. Thanks. <laughs>